Hello everybody, this is AKMan1984 and I'm back today to show you something pretty cool I found on the net. And as you can see by the page, you already know what it is, unless you haven't seen it already. But uh, I fell on this site kind of by mistake, because I wanted to do this uh, by my, on my own and uh, to, to, to have this done, and but someone already did it. So uh, it's pretty cool that they did it and uh, it works awesome. Um, the before I start showing you guys this is that I want to thank you guys for the latest people that who subscribed on my channel I'm up to 324 which is pretty cool and I'm up to 4,000 46,000 views which is awesome so continue guys and I will provide you with no more videos sorry the, I want to say sorry that um, I wasn't able to upload videos for until, since Monday as, uh, I've been kind of busy and uh, under the weather, so um, sorry about that. But I'm back today to show you Computer Craft Emulator. Now, Thomas1996 made this by using Java, and it's pretty cool. Uh, I'll put a link to the, to the uh, site in the description. And this works on Windows, Linux, and Mac. So, uh, and also he... Uh, he updated it to the latest computer craft version so you can have advanced computers in it and it works as exactly how it would in Minecraft or computer craft and um, it's pretty cool so I'll show you the computer craft so much this is the computer craft emulator it's pretty basic uh, on the bottom here in small letters you have the uh, emulator by Thomas1996 and computer craft by Dan200. Now the only buttons you have here is file, uh, open and edit config file which I'm going to show you. Here you have computer and advanced computer. Here you have help with help and then about. So let's click on help and here it just shows you the shortcuts. So if you press control T it will terminate the focused computer like just exactly like in computer craft so this is the shortcuts in computer craft so when you're running a program and you press control T it terminates the program here control S will shut down the computer and control R will reboot the computer just like exactly on computer craft and then you have control V which is not in computer craft but uh, this will paste anything you have in a clipboard, which means that whatever outside source you have copied into your into your clipboard, which means by right-clicking and copying it, uh, it will paste inside of the computer that you have focused. Escape will close the computer, and then Control R will quickly create a new computer and auto-select it. Control Alt N will create a new advanced computer and auto select it too. F1 will take a screenshot, F2 will toggle some debug information, and Control right click will add the focus computer to the list. Well, I'll show you all this what this means, and left click will give the focus and move the computer. I'm going to show you what all this means. Here, if you go about, it just shows you, it just gives you the computer craft emulator created by Thomas, whatever, whatever. So, oops, sorry. So we'll go into file. Uh, sorry, we'll we'll start a computer, and then you'll get this window. And what this is is let me make it bigger. There you go. So what this is is it gives you the ID of the computer. When, now when you do this, it creates the computer and it creates it on the ID that is selected in this box so you can have whatever ID you want um, and then that will be the ID of the computer that is created so you don't have to go you can skip a number if you want to but 0 will be our first computer because I already created something on it so when we click OK we get this huge screen with a computer computer graph with the computer craft OS 1.4 ID 0 I don't know what these means exactly but uh, 
and then you have not not labeled. And this you can label your computers inside ComputerCraft by writing label set. If I'm not correct, I'm not mistaken. But you basically can label your computers. Now, why this computer is so big is because I made it that way. If you go into File, Edit Config Files, you get another window with a lot of uh, things in it. Now, it's pretty uh, simple here. You have the uh, limited bytes for the computer. You don't touch this. Okay. Here you have the computer background. Now this only changes the background of the computer of regular computers. Doesn't change the. Uh, it does. I think it does change the background of advanced computers, but you don't need to do it. So leave these alone. Uh, and you can, if you want to, but you can change the blue, you can change the green, and then you can change the red. Here is the thing that you want to change. It's the amount of scaling you want the uh, uh, computer to have. So if you change this number here, the five, um, it will change the, the the scale of the computer. I'll show you that in a couple of seconds. Here you have enable HTTP, which means that you can connect it to the net and you can upload your programs to a specific site, uh, which I forgot the name of the site right now, but um, you don't don't use it right now, but I think it does work if you know how to use it. Here you can change the frame of the computer. So blue, you can change to blue, green, and then red. And also you can highlight the characters inside of the sorry you can change the uh, screen size with with this um, with these two uh, numbers but don't touch these I mean you could if you want to but don't touch these I suggest you just fill around with the scaling here so if we put this a little bit to the side we can see the computer in the back so if I put the one and then go here and then save it, you see that the computer here got super small. And then if we go back to that, if we put two, it gets bigger. If we put six, it gets tremendous. And then so on and so forth. So you could put four and whatever. So let's keep it at 5 and let's close this. Okay, so that's pretty much it. You have your advanced computers and advanced computers are gold and also you can have the trim is gold. Um, let me just make these smaller for a second because uh, I want to show you something cool. Okay, so and you can have any, uh, as many computers you want open. Uh, you don't have to have two or one, or you can do as many as you want. It's endless, and you can sort them all here uh, side by side, like I just did with these two. So if I press Control and r uh, right click, it uh, it makes the borders of these two computers red. Now what that means is I can type the same thing in the two computers and do the same exact thing in the two computers so if I just shut down both computers and then uh, oh, it's, not, it's not restarting okay. so I just shut down this computer and I, and I restarted this computer so there you go uh, and if you do the other commands it basically works exactly the same now if I press X, X escape it makes the computer close and then you have one computer so we'll make this computer big again and I want to show you something else that I've done and I've been working on for two weeks now I think it's been a little bit more than two weeks but uh, I've been working on this little code that I uh, made for you guys and it's ready to go to download so I'm gonna put a link to where you can download it uh, and you can play with it. Now, before I show you the code, I want to tell, I want to say that I know the way I did the code is not the best way. 
if a professional sees this, this code, he's going to say, like, why did you do it this way? It's completely wrong. But it does work, and it's simple the way it works. And I don't think also no one has done this code yet. I haven't found it. I tried to look for it, and I couldn't found, find it. So I did it myself, and I hope no one has done it. So I'm, I'm going to put it up so that people can get it. So you write time. And the first thing you get is please enter your local time. Now, this I made a code to put to show the time of where you are by seconds and a.m. by p.m. Um, now, this you have to enter in the time that is you have to set the time first. So the thing, the first thing it asks you is enter your present hour. Use numbers. What? Use numbers 1 to 12. So I'm going to enter my time, which is 10. The next thing it asks you is enter the minutes. So it is 56 minutes. And then it asks you if it's AM or PM. So mine is AM. So if you go here and you look at it, it says the time is 10, it's 56 and then 7, 9 a.m. And if I bring up a clock here, the, the seconds are wrong. That's because I pressed enter at the wrong time. It's, it's close enough. But you can, I suggest you try to match this. So wait until this gets to back to 12 or 1 or 0. And then press enter So if you want it to match these seconds. So it does work. I've I've te tested this pretty thoroughly. I haven't tested it completely. I, I, um, I just haven't tested like 24 hours, but I'm I'm pretty sure it does work. Um, but it does change the AM to the PM and PM to AM. And I'm going to show you that in the code now. So let's go into CC oh, Notepad++ and show you the code. So this is the code. And like I said, to professionals, I know the way I wrote it is is stupid, and um, it's not the best way, but it does work. So it's the simple way. I might change it, but right now it works, so I don't give a crap. <laughs> so the first thing is you do is set the variables: hour, minute, and seconds. Hour is h, and minute is m, and as seconds. So you set them to zero. Second thing you do is clear the page and set the cursor pose to one and you say enter your local time and then you write enter your present hour use numbers one to twelve and then you you tell the computer to read whatever input is going to come and set it to the variable h and then once you do that you ask the user to put the put in the minute and then you set that to the variable m. And then you ask the user to put in if it's am or put in pm. And then you put the variable am pm to whatever input the user puts. And then you get the function print time. Now this is the part where it looks kind of stupid, but I mean it works. So, so the first thing you do is while you do and then you take s and you add it by one so this is how you add you make additions in computer craft s equals s plus one and then you sleep it by one second and this is if you just have this code here this will continuously go on and on and on and it will add one every second the next thing you do is if s equals sixty then m equals m plus 1. Now what this means is every 60 seconds m will uh, plus 1 num it will it will plus a number. So whatever number is at m it will plus 1. So and why 60 because there's 60 seconds in a in a, in a minute, sorry. <laughs> so once you do that you go on to the hours. So if m equals equals 60, then h 
equals 1. So every 60 minutes, h will plus 1 number because there are 60 minutes in an hour. So that once that's done, what you need to do is reset the minutes, sorry, yeah, the seconds and the minutes. Why? It's because if you don't, it's going to continue on and on and on, never stops. So this is how you reset the, sec the seconds. So again, if s equals 60, then s equals 0. So that's how basically you reset the seconds. Same thing for the minutes. Now this here is a new command I haven't shown you guys. Um, it's a little complicated, but uh, if you look at it, it's pretty simple. So what this is, is if h equals 12 and s equals 0 and am pm equals am, then am pm equals pm. Now what this means is when the, the clock reaches 12 and s is 0 and am pm is am, which means is basically it's telling you that if it's if it's showing AM and if it's showing zero and if it's showing twelve, then change it to PM. I'll show you an example what what I'm trying to say here is basically changing AM to PM and here PM to AM and it has to be written like not not any other way uh, and it does work and I'll show you in a couple of seconds. Once you do that you have to reset the 12 or reset reset it to 1 1 o'clock 1 p.m. why because um, why did I put 13 here is because because uh, you need to wait one hour to 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 change it from 12 p.m. so 12 a.m. or whatever you want to 1 a.m. or 1 p.m. doesn't really matter because there is no zero uh, time. So this is how you reset. The, it's pretty much the same as how you reset the minutes and the seconds. It's just that when it hits 13, it should be 1 o'clock. So once you get that done, you put you print out the time. This is how you print out the time. The first thing you do is print the time is, and then you print H, the hour, and then you print uh, the uh, two dots, and then you print out M, and then two dots again, and then you print out S, and then you print out AM, PM. And then you do two ends at the end, and then at the end of the, your command you, you do print time which basically loops back to here. So let me show you an example. This is still going. Um, and let's just terminate this. So if I go time and I write 11.59 a.m. It's going to start counting down. And I'll skip this and show you when it changes from AM to PM. Okay, so it's going to change soon and uh, just look at the AM and there. So it changed. So now it's 12 PM and so on. It's going to continue on and on and on. So that's how pretty much you do it. I mean, uh, there's nothing else to show you. Like I said, I'll put a link to the site where you can download computer craft emulator and another link to download this time program if you want it and also don't forget that you can output this to a monitor uh, by now you should know how to do that uh, it's pretty simple I just have to modify my code a little bit to to output it to a monitor and uh, that's pretty much it like I said thanks for everyone who just subscribed to my channel and thanks for everyone who liked my recent videos keep the good work guys uh, it's making me really happy and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to upload some new stuff th to show you guys. And uh, keep on doing it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.